especially your heads inside the rail car at all times. Please refrain from smoking, eating, or drinking anything but water aboard the Greenfield Village Railroad. Continue on now through Railroad Junction with our capacity storage district depot. Originally built in 1858 in Smith Creek, Michigan, about eight and a half miles southwest of Fort Huron. Where is the boy Thomas Edison working for the Grand Trunk Railroad? 
Tell the streets and newspapers along the way to report here on to Detroit and back again. On the other side of the uh, depot here, that fenced-in area is the new home to the vegetable building from the Detroit Central Market. Originally built in 1861 right here in Detroit, and it's coming soon to Greenfield Village. Well, as you know, it takes two things to keep a steam locomotive running. One of them is coal, the other is water. We're making a quick stop here at the Greenfield Village Water Tower, and we're going to top off the tender with water. Just a quick stop, everybody. our Detroit, Toledo, and Milwaukee roundhouse. That's where we repair and maintain our three coal-fired steam locomotives. It was originally built in 1884 in Marshall, Michigan, but we've recreated the building here at Greenfield Village in the year 2000, using elements from that original building. Right out front is our Pierre Marquette turntable. That's how we bring our locomotives and rolling stock in and out of the roundhouse. It was built right here in Detroit in 1901 at the Detroit Bridge and Ironworks, but was used primarily in Petoskey, Michigan, at the Pierre Marquette Railroad. Oh my God. We reacquired it in 1988 and have been using it ever since to bring our equipment and our rolling stock in and out of the roundhouse. Oh now that turntable is about 68 feet long, weighs 42 tons, it has no motor on it. That's right, it's operated by hand. Okay, we've topped off the tender with water. With two, two, three, we're on our way again. So folks, please stay seated on the trains in motion and keep those arms, legs, and heads inside the rail cars at all times. Oh. On the other side of the roundhouse is our Liberty Craftworks District, where artisans and craftsmen create beautiful objects, in glass and pottery, tin and weaving. There's a print shop and a sawmill as well. And don't miss the Davidson Grosser Glass Gallery with a spectacular collection of industrial glass. While you're there, stop by the Liberty Craft Works store. Maybe take home a few of these beautiful items for yourself.
still moving, wait for the whistle, everyone. Welcome back to the Greenfield Village Railroad. Today we have our Thomas A. Edison Cold Fire Steam Locomotive pulling the train, and I'm Mike, your conductor. For the safety of our younger riders, we ask that the adults with them place themselves on the outside of the road. If that's not practical, please make sure they're held they're easily within your reach. And please stay seated while the train's in motion. Keep those arms and legs and especially your heads inside the rail car at all times. Please refrain from smoking, eating, or drinking anything but water aboard the Greenfield Village Railroad. Let me get on a chain. Huh? This one. This one. No. I like this one. That one. innovation on display. I'd like to remind you Greenfield Village is divided into seven districts. Our first is Henry's Model T, where you can get a ride on a genuine Ford Model T car at the loading dock on the corner of Bagley and State Street, right here in Henry's Model T district. And that brings us to the birthplace of Henry Ford. Coming up on your left, it's the Ford Farm, built here in Dearborn, Michigan in 1861. Henry was born in that white farm house in July of 1863 and lived there with his parents and five brothers and sisters. As you can see, we have our Hoodie Marino sheep here in the pasture. And off to your left, the red building is the William Ford Farm. It's where we take care of all the horses we use every day here at Greenfield Village. Up next, it's our Main Street District. Here you'll find the Wright Brothers home and the Wright Cycle Shop, the birthplace of aviation. Aviation. Right across the street, find out about the 57 varieties at the Heinz home when they first spot the tourist radish. And take a spin on our 1913 Herschel Stillman Carousel. Don't forget, smack dab in the middle of Main Street. It's the center of the known universe. Of course, we're talking about... Please stay seated until the train comes to complete stop. 
Can I get you to go ahead to exit on the left side only? Susquehanna Station is your stop for old time historic baseball. Which is happening right now down at Walnut Grove. So it's just a quick walk up the hill, then down the hill to Walnut Grove and historic baseball. Again, stay seated until the train comes to a complete stop and the engineer gives a blast of the whistle, which means the air brake is set. And then I'll give you the go ahead to exit on the left side. Or wait for the whistle, everybody. Seated while the train's in motion. Keep those arms and legs and especially your heads inside the rail car at all times. Please refrain from smoking, eating, or drinking anything but water aboard the Greenfield Village Railroad. I have water. Yeah, I don't have water. I have water and and as we continue on now through our Fortress of Powers District, we're now passing the historic Susquehanna Plantation, built in 1825 in St. Mary's County, Maryland. It was owned by Henry and Elizabeth Carroll, a prosperous family who had lavish parties in that plantation house. Now compare that to the small red house next door. That's the Thomas Clifton home. Thomas was an indentured servant, and he lived in that small one-room house with his wife and seven children. At the end of the road on the other side of our Ferris windmill, that's the Daggett Farm, a living history farm from 1754 in Andover, Connecticut. Stop in and see how Samuel Daggett and the family lived and worked on the farm prior to the American Revolution. And be sure to check out their kitchen garden in the back, where they grew fruits and vegetables and herbs for medicinal purposes.
Project, one of the largest in southeastern Michigan. Hundreds of trees have been planted and the waterways cleaned and cleared. And wildlife has returned with a herd of deer and many smaller animals as well, like rabbits, squirrels, and turtles. Birds too, like green and blue herons, egrets in Canada geese, and a big old flock of wild turkeys as well.
And that brings us to our next stop of the day, and that's Swiss Creek Station. And here you have full access to Railroad Junction, Main Street, and Liberty Crabwood. If you're leaving us here, please stay seated until the train comes to a complete stop. And I give you the go-ahead to exit on the left side open. Smith's Creek Station is your stop for Main Street and the Carousel, as well as Railroad Junction and the Roundhouse. And you're just a few short steps away from Liberty Craftworks and Henry's Power Team. So again, please stay seated until the train comes to a complete stop. The engineer will give you that blast of the whistle, which means the air brake is set. And then I'll give you the go-ahead to exit on the left side only. Please stay seated, everybody, till you hear that whistle blow.
Bent holds the oldest buildings in the village. Stone structures on the left wall built in England in the early 1600s. Windmill is the oldest windmill in North America. Built in Cape Cod around 1650. Wow. Oh yeah. 